Hi, I'm Dr. Sohail Khan. I am an orthopedic trauma and joint replacement surgeon and I've been practicing in Kondwa since last 10 years. This Sana hospital we started 7 years back and we are specialized in robotic joint replacements, trauma surgeries and deformity correction surgeries. Initially, we were all uh, very skeptical about using any kind of technology in joint replacements because we were already doing joint replacements well and we thought what more can it add. There are many robotic uh, robots available for joint replacement surgeries, one using uh, Miller system, the other using uh, saw system. Some were autonomous, some were uh, non-autonomous or semi-autonomous. Some were city based, some were non-city based. And a fully autonomous robotic system, I thought that how well it would cut without the use of a surgical hand, without any surgical footprint. So I was actually initially very skeptical about it. The autonomousness of the robotic system is actually helping because uh, whenever we are using this robot system, we actually get what amount of cut it is going to make on the distal femur or the proximal tibia that is on the joint of the patient's knee. When we are 100% satisfied that it is not going to cut any of the soft tissues, uh, then we proceed with the cutting. So the autonomous system has actually helped in it becoming more uh, haptic, it becoming more safe and also because it is fully autonomous, we do not have to use our hands. I have seen many surgeons complaining that they have shoulder pains, they have this wrist pain, they get this carpal tunnel syndromes, uh, decurvance disease by using the saw based system or the mill based system and uh, I have not experienced because I don't have to use my hands when using a miso robotic system. First is safety. Safety meaning because we know what we are going to cut and we are not going to release much of the soft tissues. So we know that functionally we are going to give the patient a better outcome and an earlier uh, recovery as compared to the traditional methods. Second is accuracy. We know prior to the surgery what kind of implant we are going to use. So the inventory has become a lot less. And third is preciseness, meaning the fit of the implant on the cut femur on the cut TBI is so press fit that even if we don't use a cement system still the implant fits so well on the bone that uh, we are satisfied that we have put a very very stable knee. Definitely yes. One, we are making the patient walk on the day of surgery. Maybe three hours just after the spinal subsides the patients are made to walk. This has uh, helped us in reducing the influence of deep vein thrombosis. On the next day, we are generally against use of any kind of support system for these patients. So we do not use a walker. On the first post-op day, patients are made to walk without walker support. Initially, we just give a hand or something. And then by the end of the day, patient starts walking and they gain that confidence. On the second day, we teach them how to climb stairs up and down and uh, second or third day the patients are discharged so it has uh, reduced the overall stay of the patients and uh, the confidence the patient gets after the knee replacements is tremendous reliable and accurate